Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting live from JC1 Auditorium, Sunway University, we present you the opening ceremony of the 15th International Symposium of Radiation Physics, ISRP 15. Let's give a big round of applause to Yamber Hormat, Hari Jamaluddin, the Minister of Past Malaysia, for joining us online as a guest of honour. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem, Negaraku. <laughs> Please be seated. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Yang berhormat, Khairi Jamaluddin, Minister of Health Malaysia, Professor Sibran Popema, Vice Chancellor of Sunway, President of Sunway University, Professor Graham Wilkinson, Vice Chancellor of Sunway University. Tan Sri Jamila Mahmood, Executive Director, Sunway University Center of Planetary Health. Professor Emeritus, Distinguished Professor Dr. David Bradley, Chairman of the 15th International Symposium on Radiation Physics and President of International Radiation Physics Society. Dr. Siti Asha Binti Hashim, Director General, Malaysian Nuclear Agency. Professor Dr. Muhammad Iqbal Saripan, Deputy Vice Chancellor, Academic and International University Putra Malaysia, Professor Engineer Dr. Hyrule Azhar Abdul Rashid, Vice President, Research, Industrial Collaboration and Engagement, Multimedia University, Associate Professor Chemist Dr. Zaitun Biti Abdul Majid, Dean, Faculty of Science, University Technology Malaysia, Professor Dr. Suhairul Hashim, Deputy Dean, Faculty of Science, Technology, Faculty of Science, University Technology Malaysia, Co-Chairman of the 15th International Symposium on Radiation Physics, Members of VIPs, Ladies and Gentlemen, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. On behalf of the organizer, we wish to extend our warm welcome, Selamat Datang, and thank you, especially to our guests of honor, YB Kairi, members of delegates, representative from among the collaborators, sponsors, members of media, and international and local participants to this 15th International Symposium on Radiation Physics, ISRP 15. My name is Professor Faisal Mohammad from the Nuclear Science Program, University of Kebangsaan, Malaysia. And my name is Has Fazila Hassan from Malaysia Nuclear Agency. It is our pleasure to be your host for this beautiful morning event. To begin the opening ceremony with the blessings, I would like to invite Professor Faiza Muhammad to lead the doa recitation and a moment of silence. al -Fatiha. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin was salatu was salamu ala ashrafil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala ali wa sahbi ajma'in 
Ya Allah, Ya Rahim, praise be to God, the Lord of the worlds. Peace and blessing be upon our Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companion, and for those who followed his example till the judgment day. Allahumma Ya Allah, on this blessed morning, in conjunction with the ISRP 15, we beseech you and grateful towards you in favor of all the infinite blessing to us, your humble servant, to live in safe and prosperous life. We seek your blessing for a flawless progress of this event from the beginning till the end. We seek your guidance, Ya Allah, to steer clear of events that would detrimental the progress of this event. Ya Latif, Ya Rahman, please bless us with your tawfiq and hidayah. Please guide us to greatness, peace, glory, and prosperity in this world and the hereafter. Make us a responsible intellectual. Grant us with a valuable knowledge that will be beneficial to mankind in order to, be, to gain your mardatillah. Ya Munzil al barakah bestow peace to our beloved country, Malaysia. Preserve us from this pandemic or any threat and disaster, neither man-made nor natural disaster. And to you, Ya Allah, we ask for security and prosperity upon us, our leaders and our country. Bestow patience in us in order to face the challenges and the strength to do more charitable deeds. Please accept our deeds and please reward us accordingly, Ya Allah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad wa alayhi wa sallam, wa alayhi wa sallam, wa alhamdulillah, ya rabbil alameen. Ameen, ameen, ya rabbil alameen. Thank you very much, Professor Faizal Muhammad. For your information, today we have about more than 300 participants from 44 countries and also industrial experts and professionals joining this symposium. All participants gathering here physically and virtually to discuss on nuclear and science technology, current trend, and potential future issues involving radiation in various applications and to share thought and change ideas on how to chart the journey forward to reach the new height. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, to, give, to begin with, I would like to invite Professor Emeritus, Distinguished Professor Dr. David Bradley, the Chairman of the Organizing Committee, to deliver his welcoming address. Please welcome Professor David. Yang Bahomat, uh, Kairi Jamaluddin, Minister of Health, Malaysia, dear distinguished guests. I want to take just a short while to tell you something about the International Radiation Physics Society and how we've got here where uh, you first started. I take you first of all to 1895, the discovery of the X-ray by Wilhelm Röntgen in Würzburg in Germany. And 1896, the discovery of radioactivity. In 1897, the discovery of the electron, surprisingly, since we knew a lot about electricity already. But let me tell you something that uh, in 1895, it was November that Durangan discovered the X-ray. And yet, in 1896, four months later in Taiping, there was the first demonstration of the X-ray in Malaya. In fact, it was the first demonstration of the X-ray anywhere what the Straits Times called the, uh, the Far East, by which they meant Southeast Asia and Northeast Asia. So, uh, I take you now to 1892, because to demonstrate those x-rays, by, by the way, Mr. Ray, in, in Taiping, demonstrated the x-ray. He was the, uh, the, uh, uh, from the, from the museum in Taiping. There was no electricity supply. In fact, there was no electricity supply anywhere in the world until 1892 in New York, the very first distributor of power. Enough power to power 400 light bulbs. That was by Thomas Edison. Now, the X-ray tube that was shown in Taiping looks very much like a light bulb. And in fact, uh, so Mr. Edison, uh, worked with someone called T Clarence Daly. And Clarence Daly, introducing these, these X-ray tubes, used his left hand to demonstrate that they worked. A few months later, 
He was suffering from radiation dermatitis, not only to his left hand, but also to his face. In fact, his left hand was then amputated. Being a scientist, he then started to use his right hand. And a few months later, he lost his right hand. And after that, before he was 40, he died. So we've realized it's good to now realize in, in hindsight that radiation can both be powerful and also can be dangerous. But how were they to know since they were the first people to work with this? I then take you from the, the, that period, by the way, uh, Thomas Edison was also working with a friend at the time whose name was Nikola uh, 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 Tesla. So Nikola Tesla introduced to Edison the idea of the AC electricity supply. They fell out. Thomas Edison became one of the world's greatest industrial magnates. Tesla was forever to be known as the person who produced the greatest magnet. <laughs> but he died penniless, whereas Thomas Edison was a very, very rich man. So it's more, we do need both science and the commercial sector to come together. And then I take you to, 18, to 1932, the discovery of the, elect, of the neutron. So the neutron opened up the world to the inners of the nucleus. And uh, Thomas uh, uh, and Chadwick in Liverpool worked with someone called Joseph Rotblatt, later to become Sir Joseph Rotblatt, Nobel Peace Prize winner. So we then realized by 1939 that the neutron and the nucleus were rather dangerous in the wrong hands, and that, uh, but in the right hands, we can see that they've been used for all sorts of. Uh, applications in modern technology. So dangerous that we know what happened in the mid-40s. And uh, by 1953, there was the famous speech of Theodore Roosevelt, the Atoms for Peace speech that led to the establishment of the International Atomic Energy Agency. I then take you to 1968 and to the first purpose-built Center for Radiation, Oncology, and Nuclear Medicine in Malaysia at General Hospital Kuala Lumpur. And believe it or not, they had a 43 mega electron volt betatron, the largest energy production ever to have taken place in Malaysia. And uh, at that time, there were just one or two radiotherapy centers in the world, in, in the country. There are now 34 in this country matching the WHO uh, guidelines for the number of radiation therapy facilities for a population, one per one million. So uh, I then take you to 1982. We've already heard from Dr. Siti Ahesha. Criticality first occurred. The first nuclear reaction to occur in this country was in June 1982. And yet in Penang, in February 1982, sorry, April 1982, was ISRP2, the second international symposium on radiation physics, just a month or two before the first criticality in, uh, situation in, in Malaysia. And since then, the International Radiation Physics Society, which was set up in Penang by Sir Joseph Rotblatt and Daphne Jackson, the first female professor of physics in the whole of the United Kingdom. And she devoted her whole life to nuclear physics and left her estate to the, to the world and established something called Women in Science and Engineering. So uh, I knew her personally because I'm an emeritus professor of the University of Surrey where she was head of department. ISRP2 was the beginning of the International Radiation Physics Society. Joseph Rotblatt, by that time, was external examiner to USM Physics Department. Uh, and he lived, by the way, I should say that what I'm talking about are three Ps, the power of the mind, the, 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 the passion, 
And finally, the pathos, as we've heard about Clarence Daly, who lost, lost his life. So the passion of the, the, the power of the mind, and the, the incredible thing is that Sir Joseph Botblatt lived in Asmara Road in London. <laughs> Asmara in Malay means passion. So uh, since 1982, this conference series has been around the world. And here we are now at the beginning of ISRP 15. We are only the third country in the world to have hosted this conference series twice. India, Brazil, and now Malaysia. And uh, I'm so incredibly proud of the work that's been done in this country. I first arrived in Malaysia in 1977. I stood where the, ex where the nuclear reactor is now. Uh, I'm so incredibly proud to be a member of this society and for us to host this meeting. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, distinguished Emeritus Professor Dr. David Bradley, for the remarkable speech. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, next, I would like to invite Professor Simbram Popperma, the president of Sunway University, to deliver his remarks. Please welcome, Professor. Good afternoon, good evening, or even good night, although I don't mean you should go to sleep now. But I know there's people all over the world watching this. Yang Bahang, Bohormat, Minister of Health, Kairi Jamaluddin, Professor David Bradley, the President of the Conference, Dr. Siti Ayasa, Director General of the Malaysian Nuclear Agency, Iqbal Saripan, Deputy VC Research of UPM, Hyrule Asyar, VP Research Multimedia University, Suhairul Hashim, Deputy Dean UTM, Graham Wilkinson, Vice Chancellor of Sunway University, Mahendra Nair, the Pro Vice Chancellor of Research Engagement and Impact, and Tantri Professor Jamila, the Director of the Sunway Center for Planetary Health. Ladies and gentlemen, It is my great pleasure to welcome you to this 15th International Symposium on Radiation Physics. We are truly honored to host you this year at Sunway University, although much rather we would have liked to see all of you here in Sunway. The symposium has been organized by the Center for Applied Physics and Radiation Technologies in collaboration with UTM and UPM and supported by Pan-Malaysian University and Research Institutes and the International Radiation Physics Society. Sunway University is always looking forward to work with other academic institutions, industries, government, and the general population, the so-called quadruple helix. This is part of our founders' ambition to create a sustainable, livable, green, and smart city with education at the center of it all to contribute to Malaysia's aspiration to be a high-tech nation. Sunway University is private, but not for profit, and it is research-led. To us, education is not just about knowledge, but also about values, about skills, and about mindset. Recently, the university has established the Sunway Center for Planetary Health, but equally important, adopted planetary health as the central theme in our education and research. Our 22 research centers and five interdisciplinary research clusters are working towards sustainable solutions in collaboration with government, industry, and society, and with partners in Malaysia, ASEAN, and abroad. Examples are collaborations with MIT on CO2 capture and utilization, with Harvard University on global health, and with the University of Cambridge on infectious diseases and on radiobiology. Examples of projects in Malaysia are the Fundamental Research Project on Successful Aging, a project with Selangor Police on prevention of suicides, the establishment of a pandemic center with UKM, and the TDF2 project 
cloud-based intelligent measurement, monitoring, and analytic system in support of radiation medicine. A more than one million ringgit project funded by MOSTI in collaboration with MMU, ALIPS, from industry, and CIRIM. The scheme is a result of the adoption and implementation of the 1010 Malaysia Science, Technology, Innovation and Economy MISTI framework. Sunway University takes the 1010 MISTI framework very serious. Its intention is to first stimulate the growth of research and development through collaboration. Through collaboration. Second, to promote talent development to transform Malaysia from a user to a creator of technology. And third, to create new research and development and commercialization opportunities in medical technology especially. But there's also applications in material sciences, there's applications in agriculture, etc. Worldwide, ideas from nuclear sciences have produced commercializations on an industrial scale as well as societal impact, especially in healthcare. At Sunway Medical Center, we practice essentially all forms of CT, MRI, PET, and so-called gamma knife for brain surgery. Malaysia has an amazing infrastructure. The Nuclear Agency, the Atomic Energy Licensing Board, and the Medical Devices Agency. The support by the Ministry of Health in supporting and driving Radiation medicine in the country is much appreciated. The ISRP 15 organizers have invited an all-star roster of keynote speakers who are leaders and pioneers within their respective fields from around the world. The meeting sessions provide an effective platform for radiation physicists to present their research, network with industry, and advance their professional careers. There will be exchange of ideas, sharing of knowledge, and networking. And I'm very pleased that you will have a special session on women in nuclear science and technology on Wednesday. Once again, I warmly welcome you all to the ISRP 15 and hope you will find the meeting both intellectually rewarding and enjoyable. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Professor Singran, for the speech. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, now we have reached the most awaited moment. Without further ado, we would like to welcome YB Kairi Jamaluddin, Minister of Health Malaysia, to deliver his opening speech and subsequently to officiate the ISRP 15. Please welcome YB Kairi Jamaluddin. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan salam keluarga Malaysia sehat sejahtera. Just uh, giving a quick sound check. Um, can everyone hear me? Okay, great. It's almost two years into the pandemic, but a lot of people forget to unmute themselves. Um, first of all, uh, I would like to extend uh, my sincere apologies for not um, being able to join you in person this morning. Um, I'm I've been feeling under the weather over the last uh, three days, uh, but I've, I've been checking, testing every day, and, and so far, so good, so far everything negative, but I thought it'd be a good idea for me to stay away from you this morning, uh, just just uh, to be safe. So um, my apologies once again for, for not um, joining in person. Uh, it gives me a great honor to nonetheless join you virtually. Uh, for the 15th International Symposium on Radiation Physics uh, today. Um, we've heard a lot of great things from uh, the first uh, speakers, from Professor Bradley as well as Professor Popema, on uh, some of the exciting discussions that you will be having uh, during the next few days. Um, I'm pleased that uh, we are able to support this, uh, not just, uh, of course, uh, the organizers, but also uh, Sunway University. And let me congratulate Sunway University uh, for setting up the Center for Planetary Health. I think this is uh, much, much needed and welcome to look at uh, health, not just in terms of um, medical, clinical health outcomes, but uh, in totality. And also congratulations to my uh, dear friend, Tansri Dr. Jamila, for being um, a 
appointed to head this this very important center. Thank you to uh, UTM, UPM, as well as uh, my former ministry, the Ministry of uh, Science, Technology and Innovation, MOSTI, and its uh, agencies, Nuclear Malaysia, AELB, uh, for supporting uh, this very, very important conference. Um, it's very heartening to see that the symposium is taking steps to promote both global exchange of uh, and integration of scientific information related to the interdisciplinary issues of radiation physics with researchers from various fields, including the promotion of not just theoretical and experimental research in radiation physics, but also research into the physical aspects of the interaction of radiation with inert or living material systems, education in radi radiation physics, and the use of radiation for peaceful purposes. Ladies and gentlemen, as, uh, as brilliantly articulated by Professor Bradley earlier, uh, the X-ray is not a not a recent uh, phenomenon here in Malaysia. Um, it was used in Taiping way back in 1895, and a complete appara apparatus for producing X-rays was presented actually to the government of the government hospital in Ipoh in October 1897 in commemoration of Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee, our colonial. It was exciting for the first time. Healthcare practitioners were allowed to see through the body instead of having to rely on indirect diagnosis and evidence of successful treatment. Because of their immense usefulness, radiation technology was quickly adopted worldwide and has had a profound impact on the way we live and on the way we diagnose illnesses and on the way we help people get better health outcomes. Malaysia has a special focus, as you know, in capacity building. We've built up a solid body of well-trained specialists in radiation technology, and uh, they are well prepared to continue this tradition for future generations. And conferences like this provide a valuable opportunity for research scientists, industry specialists uh, to share their experiences. Today, radiation physics plays an important role in disease diagnostics as well as treatment. The growth of medical physics support in Malaysia is led, of course, by the Ministry of Health, but it gets in immense uh, infrastructural support and research uh, from our sister agencies at MOSTI, in particular Nuclear Malaysia, and of course the regulatory control of the Atomic Energy Licensing Board. And I was thrilled when I was the Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation to visit Malaysia's nuclear reactor. And many Malaysians to this day don't actually know we have a nuclear reactor. Malaysia's attractiveness as uh, learning and development research and medical hub is, of course, underpinned by demonstrable high quality precision medicine, supported by knowledge, experience, international quality facilities, and of course, never forgetting in all that we do that the patient is at the center of all our efforts. Um, the ability of radiation medicine to deliver on the needs of society is a case in point. The detailed understanding of the of radiation, safety in application, and a clear desire of our scientists and technologists working with others around the world to continue to push the boundaries and seek further breakthroughs towards improving the human condition, ameliorating suffering and sustaining health. This is already being demonstrated the publications from our country over recent years, providing ample evidence of our presence on the world stage, notably with instances of working with August uh, institutions such as the Gray Lab of Oxford, as well as Cambridge and University College London. That the ISRP series is being hosted in Malaysia for the second time out of a total of 15 meetings over the past few decades, I think speaks volume, volumes about our presence on the international stage. Ladies and gentlemen, the COVID-19 pandemic has greatly changed the way we go about our daily lives, but at the same time, it has prompted us to apply science and technology creatively and innovatively. Integrated efforts among scientists have seen the production of the COVID-19 vaccines in a very short time. This proves that scientists, of course, play a crucial and important role in the application of knowledge and technology, especially in new fields like artificial intelligence, big data ana analytics, and blockchain to make critical decisions based on facts and informations. information. Scientists also have a huge responsibility to help Malaysia become a high-tech nation with an innovation-led economy by 2030. And thank you to Professor Popema for 
highlighting the 10 by 10 STIE framework, which I launched when I was Minister of Science. It is essentially the framework by which we want to drive the economy and economic growth over the next decade, not that not one that is um, relies on traditional factors of productivity, but rather relying on new factors of productivity, including the technology and science. Of course, in the wake of the fourth industrial revolution, healthcare services all around the world will not be spared from disruption and radiation technology will be at the forefront of artificial intelligence and IoT. As one of the earliest adopters of X-ray technology in the world, the Malaysian healthcare system, once again, uh, I hope will stay in front of the curve of change as we see more disruption and more technology augmenting radiation physics. The use of radiation, of course, is governed by complex regulations and license conditions. Therefore, it is imperative that the management and healthcare providers continue to embrace uh, the designs uh, to, respond, to respond and complement these challenges and abide by policy and regulatory frameworks. Therefore, uh, to master various skill areas, it is essential to, uh, to make sure that human capital development uh, is, uh, is prioritized as part of your uh, industry to ensure that uh, radiation physics will keep up with other technological developments. Ladies and gentlemen, before I end, I would like to once again thank and acknowledge all the delegates and the hard work from the ISRP15 team who have worked tirelessly to make this symposium a great success. I hope all the delegates will take part in the activities and presentation over the next five days. And I wish everyone a successful and fruitful symposium. Once again, uh, we would like to welcome international delegates soon back to Malaysia. Countries are reopening safely. We don't know what the days ahead have in store for us with the develop with the uh, development uh, that we see with a new uh, variant. But we can be hopeful that uh, 2022 will be a great recovery year for Malaysia and also for everyone else uh, in the world. With that, in uh, Allah Fas Bismillah Rahman Rahim, I hereby launch the 15th International Symposium on Radiation Physics 2021. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, YB Kari Jamaluddin, for the wonderful officiating speech. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, as the ISRP15 is now officially open, let me invite all of you to watch the montage video for the ISRP15. I hope you will enjoy the video.
Thank you so much. Uh, next, uh, we will invite you uh, for a photo taking session uh, before the coffee break. So uh, please remain at your seat. Uh, I would like to invite Yang uh, Berhormat Khairi Jamaluddin and also all the participants, online participants, to open your camera for the virtual photo session. Okay, the technical team, I hope you are ready to take the virtual photo first and then we go for the physical photo. Here you are. Afaiza, you want to do the counting? Yes, okay. Um, with the count of five thing and few snaps, um, five, four, three, two, one. Smile. Eh. Without without mask, you can smile. Thank you for the photo session. Thank you to the technical team for the virtual photo session. Uh, we will proceed with the physical photo session after the ceremony uh, at the end. So ladies and gentlemen, so as well, do you have anything else to remind our participants? Okay, because uh, due to the SOP, we will have, uh, we, will, uh, we will leave this room, uh, this auditorium, uh, row by row. So our, uh, our usher will assist you. YB Kari Jamaluddin, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we have now reached towards the end of our opening ceremony. On behalf of the organizing committee, we would like to thank all of you, especially to our guests of honor, YB Kari Jamaluddin, our Health Minister of Malaysia, for giving his officiating speech today. A give round of applause for YB Kari Jamaluddin. Thank you very much. As uh, Wilhelm Rongen said, great discoveries are made accidentally less often than the populace likes to think. We have now uh, reached to, towards the end of this uh, uh, opening session. We hope you will have a productive and fruitful discussion, extend network and jointly explore current and future research in radiation and nuclear science and technology at this very, very special symposium. So, Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the organizing uh, organizing committee, thank you. Wabillahi taufiq wal hidayah. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, YB Kari Jamaluddin and members of VIPs and everyone. Thank you. <laughs>